Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to Energy Speaks Back, powered by B2B Energy. My name is Paul Webb. I'm the founder of B2B Energy, and I'm your host. And weekly, I present to you experts from around the world. Welcome to episode 105, which is a special episode dedicated to schools around the world. In 1994, I went back to school to improve my personal education, and I've always struggled with the confidence in English. I find writing a challenge, but with a good team around me, I managed to get from A to B with ease. This book has been written to support children on the education of climate change, which I believe is very sparse in the education curriculum. The little orange dinghy embarks on a journey and an adventure where he has to endure the changes in weather very quickly, like we see today. So without any further ado, I give you the little orange dinghy. The Little Orange Dinghy, written by Paul Webb and narrated by Paul Webb. The Little Orange Dinghy. It was a beautiful Sunday afternoon. The sun was out and there was very little wind. We were all lined up, ready to go. I flat my sails at my mother who was moored by the side. Bang, the cannon started the race with the sun reflecting in my eyes. We were racing towards the sea to our first point, around the buoy and onto the next, with the wind whistling around my mask. To my surprise, I was in front. I could feel the sun burning on my sails. The sea was like a mill pond, calm and forgiving. By the second boy, I was still in front, no one contending. I had one lap and the race would be mine. In the distance, white horses were charging towards me as the wind increased its speed and suddenly it was dark. The wind unexpectedly changed my direction. And when I looked behind me, I was on my own and lost. It began to rain. My orange sails flapped rapidly in the increasing wind. The wind was strong and, and blowing me off course. I could not fight it. A large wave hit my side and a gust forced me over. It was a long time that I was on my side before I managed to right myself. Lightning struck my mask. My sails were ripped apart. The storm started and there was a long, loud bang and then silence. I felt tired and sad and began to cry myself to sleep. When I woke, it had stopped raining and the wind had settled. I did not know how long I had been asleep. The sound of waves lapping against my side was the only noise I could hear. I would then feel the sun on my back and my sails began to dry. A warm breeze began to rise. It started to push me in a direction which I had little control over. I found myself going faster and faster. Though I did not feel scared, the wind had its firm grip around me. The wind accelerated to a high speed, and then as if by magic, it stopped and set me free. Blue skies began to surround me again, and in the distance, a familiar sight. As I approached this beautiful sight, I could hear a noise. It sounded like cheering. Yes, I was home and the cheering had increased, not because I had won, but because I was home. The end.
thank you for listening to this audio version of The Little Orange Dinghy. I would like to lastly thank the people around me that made this happen, and they are Tracy Lane for a continuous editing of my work, James Coates for his tenacious ways with creating the book design, and lastly, our artist, Kelly McGinley-Smith.